welcome to Talk Yarning to Me. I am your host, Oddnits Adventure. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Oddnits Adventure, and you can read my extraordinarily neglected blog at oddnit.wordpress.com. I was going to start today with Wingapo because I'm insane and I am mad about Pocahontas. So, <laughs> I should say happy Good Friday for today is Good Friday, which is the 14th. Yes, it's the 14th of April. It's halfway-ish through April. Um, I just wanted to check in because it's two weeks since I did my last video and it's two weeks since the Stranded Podcasts Britain it started, so I'm going full on. But it doesn't really feel like I'm going very full on because I currently have two whips. Hmm. Amy, you're not a monogamous knitter. What is going on with you? I will show you what is going on with me. Its name, to many, is the Find Your Fade. That is what has happened. So when I last recorded, I said that I wanted to be on colour five by the end of the month, because I thought that was doable. I could do a colour a week. It's two weeks into April. I'm on colour one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course I am. I've only got one colour melt left to go, idiot. I'm on colour six. So I'm well ahead of my schedule. So I will show you it now. So we start off with Stranded Dye Works. Um, this is her plateau base, which is a sock blank. And this is the Naive Watercolour. Yeah, Naive Watercolour colourway. Um, that's why it's a bit bumpy. That's why you can't see the lace very well. It's because it is... Sorry, I've got hair. It's because it's a sock blank, so it just needs, it needs soaking and it'll be right as rain after that. Then we've got the Stranded Dye Works uh, Paradise Base, which is her Merino Cashmere Nylon Base. Oh, this one is 75-25 Merino Nylon, I should say. So yeah, this is cash, cash, no, Merino Cashmere Nylon in the Jungle colourway. She hasn't dyed this one up for quite some time, so I don't know. This is sort of one of her older ones. I got this last year, last January. But when I was doing the colour melt, I think I didn't do enough stripes, I can't remember. I think I read the pattern wrong and didn't do enough. But, quite honestly, I could do a whole other fade just with these two colours together. Just with Jungle and Naive Watercolour. And in the cashmere base, because that, especially the lace section of the Paradise bit, oh, oh it feels so good. So... <laughs> I really want to do another one and I really want to do it just these two colours mixing together it just makes me think of like Snow White and the Wicked Witch's um, the Wicked not she's Wicked Stepmother not really, she's more of just a Wicked Queen and her potions and things because there's, there's all these purpley greeny blueies here so that's what I want in life, it's more of that these, these two were scraps which is what you can totally, totally do this with. Where have I put my notebook? So... Oh, I don't know the yardage of Plateau, but Paradise Base, 142 metres. Um, yes, I used 14.6 grams of the sock blank, this one, and I used 35.71 grams of this one. So you can just use scraps really for the for the start. You don't have to buy a whole skein, and that's what I you know really want to emphasize really. And then this beautiful beautiful yarn here is fine fish in the core sock base. Uh, I think it was called Wild Card. I think this is possibly one of a kind, but I love it so much. It's so so beautiful, and this one used fifty point seven seven grams this colour so I do have 50 grams of it left roughly I can't remember how much do I have what colour is that number three I've got 57 grams so I might um get myself some contrasting heel toes and cuffs and do myself a pair of socks because these would be amazing socks 
I love green and orange together. Then we've got Hand Dyed by Kate. This didn't have a colourway name written on the side of it. It's sort of it's her basic 75-25 merino um, nylon sock yarn. So yeah, it's just a sort of plain semi-solid yellow. And then I've got Pumpkin Spice Latte. Oh, this yellow one here. Oh, I use 61 grams, 61.4 grams of this, and then pumpkin spice latte in the same base, same dye, hand dyed by Kate. I use 63.3 grams, and I am currently on half, half side, not half rug, half rug stranded dye <laughs> hand dyed by Kate, half side, which I was a bit nervous about putting in because all the colours very vibrant, very bold, very bright and this caked up was a lot dark, no this skeined up was a lot darker but caked up it's, uh, I don't know if you can, that's probably the best, it's not blowing out there is it, that's probably the best colour representation. It's quite pale and I was really nervous about putting it in but um, I'm warming to it, it is my sorts of but I do think the next colour, which is Stranded Dye Works, um, Oasis Base, which is 75-25, Reno Nylon, it's a standard sock, and this is the blazing colourway, I think it's called. But this is going to go after it, and I don't know if that's going to be really bright, because I've gone really, really bright, pale, and then back to bright again. But I don't care. This has still got all your orangey blobs in. So, yay! That has what has taken up most of my knitting time. That's where I picked it up yesterday. Where I was when I showed you two weeks ago was like over here. And the lace, oh my god, it's so easy. I know everybody's saying that, but it is so easy. And you get it wrong all the time because you're not paying attention because it's so easy. If it's complicated, you're like really following the pattern, you put lots of stitch markers in, but this, it's just so easy, you don't need any of that, so you just forget what you're doing, and oh, especially around this centre spine, because it's, it's now not the centre, I mean, they're sort of going on the bias, uh, so you keep forgetting to pearl it on the wrong side and everything, or I do anyway. So yeah, that's what's taken up most of my time. And I'm quite chuffed because it means in two weeks I have, I think I added it up and it came to about 225 grams I'd done in two weeks, which is amazing. And the more I think about it, because I've got so many shawls, I can't really see them right now. They're sort of the, over there. Um, I thought you could, but you can't. I've got so many. And I'm thinking, I don't even need to stop knitting shawls. <laughs> Even though I've got a few in my queue, I just I love I love making them more than anything else. And going into summer as well, I'm kind of like I don't want that on my lap. But then I'm like I want to make sweaters, I want to make jumpers and garments and things that aren't always to wear around my neck. So and I'm thinking, well, if I did 225 grams in two weeks, in four weeks, that's like half a kilo, which is more than um, more than a sweater's quantity for me really in, in fingering weight so I could quite happily do a jumper in a month couldn't I you know three four weeks so I'm gonna really try and push that out of me soon stop doing the shawls then the other thing that's been grabbing my attention and <laughs> I kind of forced myself to do a bit of it this week because they are my Easter socks and I realised, oh dear, Good Friday, today, yesterday I was like, actually no, it was Wednesday, I was like, oh dear, it's Easter at the weekend, and I haven't finished my Easter socks. Like, okay, I'll be knitting them over Easter, which is fine, it will help get the Easter memories in there. But this is with Blazing Needles, I'll take out the, um, the Blazing Needles which is based a village over from me in jolly old Kent so 
it's very local oh I should have mentioned all of this is British yarn all of it and this one this one this one and this one all from unravel so these two were scraps and then this I just had hanging around because who would say no to that beautiful skein um so yeah it's all and I went to Unravel because Stranded Dye Works was there, so everything here is Stranded Inspired, really. If you think about it. So, yes, this is Blazing Needles, village over from me, so very local, very British. And it's 100% merino wool, so no nylon in there. I am doing socks. I've not knitted non-nylon socks before, so I'm giving it a go. And I think these are going to be house socks anyway, because... <laughs> I really like cashmere socks and they're so soft but look at the halo that is coming up on these beloved socks that I knit in December so it's only just like December's when I knit them it's now April so you know four or five months of wear and they're so so fluffy I don't know if you can see that um, like they're peeling because I wear them in Converse's I wear them in Doc Martens <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't make socks to not wear them because that would just be silly. And if I wear through them, oh dear, I've got the scraps. I can re knit it, it'll be fine. But, um, yeah, so I'm thinking, Merino, this is, this is what I'm doing with my cashmere socks. Well, they're not 100% cashmere, they're 10% cashmere. So, but. Probably gonna be house socks. We'll see how it goes. You know, if, if they wear well, they wear well. I'm knitting them two at a time because uh, Blazing Needle. I think she sells her yarn in 50 gram skeins, so I bought two so I could do two at a time. Um, there's all my sorts of favourite colours in there. There's green, yellow, turquoise, and coral. So, and this is where I am now. So these kind of got ignored. I start I started them on the second of April, but they did get ignored because of Find Your Fate was just so addictive. And I forced myself into knitting back on these. I think it was that must have been Tuesday I picked these up again this week. And I was probably about here on Tuesday. So that's how we've come now. Today's Friday. That's where I was yesterday. So that's two. Actually no, because I, I did this heel. Because that's where the heel is on, on that sock. Because I'd done that, sock, that heel yesterday. No, day before yesterday. This one I picked up today. This heel was completed on Wednesday morning. This heel I did um, yesterday. And then I did all of that on, you know, both. Because they're two at a time on the same magic loop. Knit prosing, two mil. Very fine. Um, I'm doing a slip stitch, ah, it looks better on the camera. I'm doing a slip stitch row um, every fourth row. Uh, it's a pattern I've invented myself. I haven't really invented myself. I knit three plain rounds and then the fourth round I'll knit one slip one. Do that across the whole of the sock, front and back. Then I knit three plain rounds again. The next row I will slip one knit one so that I'm sort of staggering them so they go dip, 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 dip. not that you'll you can see that but I quite like it because it's very variegated it's very variegated <laughs> um I can't knit plain it bores me um so um, mm, 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 mm. I can't knit plain it bores me so I decided to add a slip stitch because I thought it might help pick out some of the colours because there's so so much variegation going on and um, I quite like it because you look at it and your eyes go a bit hazy like it's some kind of um, optical illusion so I'm very chuffed with that I don't have much further to go before I put the cuff on I think I think I worked out I've probably got another eight ten rows to go before I start doing the cuff so these have come on in leaps and bounds in the last couple of days but that was mainly because um, stress knitting 
That's what that was, stress knitting. So I did that in the morning and then I got stressed in the afternoon and evening, so that's what that was. Um, I have an uncanny ability of picking really awkward cars that it's really difficult for my mechanic to fix. It's not broken, it's just getting some stuff on it replaced that is getting like that we're really tired and just needed some replacements because you know they won't they probably won't survive the next MOT. So I was getting it done now because I've got like ten months until my next MOT. So I thought do it done now as I think of it. And because I saved up for it, so I get that, and it was just, oh, it's just endless. Because when they take it apart, they find everything else, don't they? <laughs> and I was waiting for it because I really needed my car. So yeah, that's that. And my other thing, this is more of a finished object. I am trying to teach myself how to sew and by that I mean I just buy patterns, I buy um, sewing magazines that have sewing patterns free with them because that will be like 7 99 and me to buy the pattern would be like £13 and I'm like hello and I get, I've got some pretty decent ones and I want sort of basic things and I want patterns like when I Look, look, looking for sewing patterns. I'm looking for something that I can make again and again and again. Something that I will wear a lot. Something that's very me. That I will make it in multiple um, fabrics and like just love. So this, right? I'm back now. <laughs> so this is the Annabelle dress by Simple Sew. It's got some gathers here, it's got this lovely neck thing here. Pay attention to this lovely neck thing here. Little short cap sleeves that are supposed to have gathers on, but um, and it's got a zip. The zip is somewhere here. Or there. Oh, there you can see. So it's quite a simple, really basic dress. Um relaxed fit, it says. It says it's for an adventurous beginner, which I am because it's I like to jump in feet first, not feet first, head first, yes I like to jump in head first and I'm learning a new craft I just like to go for it and um, the number one rule of course is to ignore the pattern so I don't like doing gathers for some reason I much prefer doing pleats which some might say that's way more difficult than gathers I'm like, I prefer doing pleats because I really like the process of pleats. I enjoy folding the fabric. But, um, and you have a dashery type shop, which is where I bought my Blazing Needles yarn. Opened up nearby, quite local to me. And I went and checked them out, and they had this amazing, amazing fabric that is yellow with little monkeys on. So I bought enough to make this dress because I thought this dress would look so cute in this, wouldn't it? And then I decided to change <laughs> the gatherings for pleats. I think I've got this the right way around, yes. Although I keep getting confused. I think I've been wearing it back to front. I've been trying it on. I think it's supposed to be this way around. I keep having the zip this side of me. I think it's supposed to be this side, is it? I don't know. But I've been finding it a bit taut. And there's obviously there is meant to be more give in the front, you know, for the the breasticles. I'll have to try it on again and then I'm gonna have to put a little label in it so I know which is the back and which is the front. Oh, I've sewn the neckband on wrong then. Oh, well, I've, I've sewn it on wrong anyway. I will show you. I've got I hemmed the little sleeves. Originally, I sewed this side of the sleeve to here and wondered why it was a bit weird looking. Um, I hemmed it. Probably wonky, that's my trademark. Um, the seam alignment on this side's not hang around is not too bad I don't know if you can 
I'm showing that well or not. It's not too bad. This side's atrocious. So you've got the so you've got the bodice bodice seam to the waistband mm, waistband. This side you've got it's up here. So that's up there. Yeah. <laughs> and I've obviously not caught that in the same machine. That's fine. I don't mind. Probably going to wear a cardigan with it anyway. I don't know what I've done to the neck band. That's not supposed to be in there. That's supposed to be out here. But I think I got confused sewing the, the facing on. And then I got angry at it. And then I thought... And I tried it on and was like, actually, no, I quite like the neck, that neckline, that little scoop. Because I think if I had that band on, it's not going to look like hers, is it? Oh, was I supposed to sew that? Or is it telling me I should have done something? Not had it, perhaps had I sewed that on back to front, am I supposed to sew that? No. No, I don't, cause, yeah. God only knows, so I just sewed it on where it was and top stitched it down. So that's my Easter dress. So I've got my Easter dress to wear with my snow melt Easter shawl, wherever it's gone. So I think that's the wrong side of it. So imagine me wearing the dress, there's the shawl with it. My little monkeys. So yeah, it's my Easter dress with my Easter shawl. So I love it. I really do, and I really do think I'm gonna make more of these in all kinds of fabric. I think I can't work out if it's probably a little bit too formal for workwear. I think if I had the gathers rather than the pleats, it probably would. Be. But I don't like doing gathers, so. Possibly. Maybe if I had. I could definitely wear for a dinner out or. Okay, I, I keep playing with it. I'm sorry. I'll put it down now. I put a concealed zip in there my first time. I was trying to watch a tutorial but um, it was like 40 minutes long. And after about 10 minutes of her explaining what fabric is and what pencils are I got a bit bored so I decided to just wing it so that's why that's a bit squiffy but you know I'm squiffy so I don't mind it's my second third it's my third dress it's my third dress I've done two skirts and a tunic and a dress with the back upside down and this dress so yeah that's three dresses and there I'm counting the tunic as a dress and two skirts Yay! I love it. I really enjoy it. And I really enjoyed spending my entire morning sewing it together. Um, so this afternoon I am going to try my damnness to finish these. Because I really want them finished. And if I can get them finished today, then I'll have an Easter hat trick. Because I've made an Easter dress. I've got Easter Rocky Road cooling in the fridge as we speak. So if I can finish these by the end of the day... I'll have like an Easter finished object hat trick, which should be quite cool. So I will see you at the end of the month with my monthly update. Um, where hopefully I'll have show you these finished. I'll show you the final fade mostly finished because I'm trying to save that for um what's it called stash dash because there's currently like 250 grams worth of yarn in that baby and there's going to be some more yarn in it with the final one so it's going to be like 300 yarn 300 yarn 300 grams which is well over a thousand meters so if i can keep that till stash dash that's a well over a thousand meters sort of leg up in there <laughs> Isn't it? So I'm going to probably try and 
keep that for that. And I really, really would like to start the laneway jumper by Vera Valamaki. I've got everything, everything's in its bag. Um I think I've worked out what I want to do with my fine fish MCN that I got in Edinburgh. I'm pretty sure I quite I quite fancy that to be a pair of Mercury socks. I've not knit Mercury socks. And they're top down. I'm normally a toe up, so I don't know if I can convert the pattern or not. I don't think I can. Well, I haven't actually looked at the pattern, but... And I also fancy knitting on DPNs. Every now and then I fancy doing DPNs, so that'd be quite cool. So I think it's on... I think someone said that they use 2.5 mil. I only have 2.5 DPNs. Um, I don't have 2.5 um, sock needles. Like Magic Leap ones, so... That would be fun, so I'll do it cuff down. But that's that's an MCN again. It's an MCN, so I don't want to do socks that will get quite a halo on for lacy. But then this is quite. This has got a halo on it from the cashmere, and they're lacy. But once they're on your foot and they're stretched out, oh, they're so soft. This is stranded Diwex as well. Mm. Stranded Diwex Paradise. It truly, truly is paradise. Really recommend her yarns. Uh, that looks fine, really, doesn't it? I love the drape. <laughs> but I think I'm going to put these on now. Because I can. I think I'm going to settle myself down with some Gilmore Girls. And I'm going to knit on my Easter socks. And wait patiently for Rocky Road to crawl. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I think that's everything. Um, I hope you have a really lovely Easter and I hope to see you soon with all of the knitting finished. This is what happens when I take my hair bands out. Is it weird, but I like this.